In order to analyze flow in the Veda zone, we have to start with some basic concepts. Darcy's law, which we've seen for the saturated zone, works fine in the Veda zone, as it turns out. The flux of water will be proportional to the head gradient. One of the things, though, that we'll need to do is refine how we think about hydraulic connectivity and storativity. In the saturated zone, we thought of these as constants, but in the Vedo zone, they're going to be a function of the water content. We also need to think about hydraulic head. Darcy's law says that the flux is proportional to the hydraulic head, and so we need to have the hydraulic head concept work in the Vedo zone. And as it turns out, it does, and so we need to be able to measure this quantity in the field in order to uh, apply Darcy's law. So let's take a look at hydraulic head. We've seen this before applied to the saturated zone. So in that case, we've got a, a static column of water. So there's no flow. So the hydraulic head needs to be constant through this column. If we plot the head as a function of uh, elevation, then the elevation head is shown here as this green line. This would be zero. The pressure head, it's by definition zero at the water table and it increases downward. And then we add them together to get the total head. Okay, so there's the total head. And we've seen this before. This is working fine for the saturated zone. But now for the Veda zone, we're going to apply it above the water table. So the elevation head we extend up and the pressure head we just extend it out further. And so now when we add these two together, we still get that the total head is equal to a constant value. And so for equilibrium, there, there's no flow. Uh, everything is in equilibrium. Uh, and what we see from this is that the pressure head here, uh, it's decreasing and reaching zero here at the water table. And in order for it to be in equilibrium, the pressure head has to be less than zero in the Vedo zone. So that's one thing we can see from this simple exercise. Another way to view this is, or I guess to see how this could work, we look at the pressure head in a capillary. So capillary is a small tube and we put this small tube in contact with an open surface of water and when we do this the water is pulled up into this small tube and we, it rises up and uh, goes in, to an elevation here uh, Z. Okay, um, this could be a, a small glass tube for example and we could visualize the water within the glass tube. Also this could be small pores um, say we have some uh, paper towel, for example, and we dip it into the water. We see the paper towel pull the water up to some height. Okay, so it's also in, um, there's no flow now, so everything is in equilibrium. And so the total head at point one has to equal the total head at point two. So the total head at point one is the pressure head at point one plus the elevation head at point one. Well, if we say that the the reference point, the datum, elevation datum is right there, then Z1 is equal to zero. And if this is the water surface, then the pressure head at point one is equal to zero. So the total head at point one has to equal zero. Okay, so let's do the total head at point two. So that's the pressure head at point two plus the elevation head at point two. And since the total head at point one and point two have to be equal for this to be in equilibrium, we know that that has to equal zero from what we got up here. And so what we get from that then is that the pressure head at point two has got to equal negative Z2. So for this to be in equilibrium, 
the pressure head right here is negative and it's equal to a negative value that's equal to the height above the water table. So when the soil is in equilibrium, when the water there is in equilibrium, the higher above the water table we are, the more negative the soil uh, suction or the pressure head will be. Okay, so one thing that I want to point out is that the this we've been we've been talking about this in terms of pressure head, and that's a, a natural extension of the total head uh, concept that we've been working with. That's the that's what drives the gradient and uh, total head is what drives flow in Darcy's law. But so so we've got this terminology down. But as it turns out, there are a variety of other, a variety of other terms for pressure head, uh, depending on who you're talking with. The soil scientist community, they tend to call this soil suction. And one of the things that we have to recognize is that soil suction, it's, it's often written as a, can be written as a suction head, or it could be written as a pressure. But one of the things that is typically different is that soil suction is regarded as uh, positive um, in the Vedas zone. And so the bigger positive value of soil suction corresponds to a larger negative value of pressure head. So as we go further up into the Vedas zone, we get in, and, and if the conditions are in equilibrium, then we get into greater and greater soil suctions. And tension, moisture tension, is also another term for soil suction. Capillary pressure, matrix potential, these are all synonyms for the same, the, for, for basically pressure head. And they're, they're, they're typically the negative of pressure head. Sometimes they're in units of head and sometimes in units of pressure. Okay, so this on one hand is a little bit unfortunate because we have multiple terms to mean the same basic thing. Um, but I pointed out here because you'll run into these terms and it's important to recognize them for what they are. Okay, so we want to measure the hydraulic head in the Vedo zone. We've measured the hydraulic head in the saturated zone using a piezometer, which is basically a pipe with a porous tip at the end, and the the head in the pipe is in equilibrium with the head in the formation, in the aquifer. Well, as it turns out, we can't do that per se, uh, at least not using the same kind of porous sand pack that we use in a piezometer, because the uh, pressure in the Vedas zone is negative and all the water would just simply get sucked out of the piezometer. So what we do instead is we use a similar concept, but we have a device, actually here's a picture of one. Uh, this, is, this is a device here called a tensiometer and it's a, a solid tube like a casing and instead of the sand pack on a piezometer, we have a a ceramic porous filter right here. This has, it's a ceramic, it, you can't see the pores, they're very small. And when the, uh, when the ceramic becomes wet, the, um, it's very hydrophobic or hydrophilic. So when it becomes wet, the um, pores fill with water and um, the water can flow through these pores, but it's very difficult to force air into these pores. It's very difficult to, to force air in and push the water out. So what you have then is this system where you fill this tube with water and the water can flow in and out across this ceramic cup, um, but the air cannot. So if, if you fill this with water and it's completely filled with water and you attach a vacuum gauge here, then when you when you fill it up initially you put it in the soil the the soil is under suction it pulls some of the water out that creates suction that's then measured by this gauge 
Okay, so that's how we measure the pressure head in soils. This is called a tensiometer because it measures soil tension. Okay, so here's a schematic of this tensiometer in the ground over here. And we need to see how to how it's measuring and how to go about using it to calculate the hydraulic head. So this is our uh, definition of hydraulic head, the elevation head plus the pressure head. And what I'm going to do is create a datum here and the elevation head is actually this is a typo that should be Z right there so the elevation head is that much and we have a pressure head that occurs in the soil right here at the the porous cup D is the depth from the gauge down to the porous cup and H here is uh, the total height of the gauge above the datum. So this is a this is a gauge, a mechanical gauge, and the um, typically what's done, and with all of the devices we have, the gauge is a vacuum gauge. And so as it as it registers registers a higher and higher value, that's a deeper and deeper vacuum. So it's an it's a it's a pressure that becomes more and more negative. Now, what we want to do is to take the reading from this gauge and turn it into a pressure head. So the gauge, I have this written down here. So the gauge is typically for our devices, it's um, the, the gauges are in units of centibars. Now, one centibar is equal to 10 centimeters of pressure head. So one centibar of suction is equal to minus 10 centimeters of pressure head. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We'll read the gauge here and then we'll convert that gauge reading into pressure head units. And we'll do that by taking this guy, this gauge reading in centibars of suction, and we multiply by minus 10 and that will give us the gauge reading in uh, units of pressure head uh, where the units are in centimeters of pressure head. Okay, so then what we need to do is determine the pressure head in the soil and that will equal the gauge pressure here. So the pressure that we, the, the pressure that we measure here plus the pressure that's from this water column. Okay, and so that's what's given there. So if we have a, a tensiometer and we can read the gauge, we can measure that. We know, th we know D, that'll be the same for, um, that'll be just be a constant and it'll depend on the depth of the, the basically it depends on how long the tensiometer is. Okay, so we can measure the pressure head and in order to calculate the total head then we know Z and we've measured the pressure head so what I've done down here is to substitute those in and I've just substitute that the pressure head is equal to D plus the gauge okay so in order to calculate the total head right here at that point we have Z and D and those are just that distance and that distance. Basically it's gonna be, I guess it'll be that. And we add to it um, G, the, the gauge reading in units of pressure head. Okay, so that gives us a way to calculate the total head right there. We calculate the, the pressure head and add to it the elevation head. So that'll be pretty cool because we can put in another one of these here at a shallower depth and it'll have a gauge on it and we could get the total head right there. And then from the distance, uh, the, the difference in elevation, we can then calculate a vertical head gradient. 
and that'll be a vertical the vertical gradient will be what's driving the flow vertically so we'll be able to get a vertical head gradient use Darcy's law assuming we can come up with a way to estimate the hydraulic conductivity okay so let's do an exercise assume that the gauge on this tensiometer is reading 14 centibars and the tensiometer is 90 centimeters long so if that's the case what's the pressure head at the bottom of the tensiometer at the at the porous cup this porous ceramic that is the place where the measurement is being made so why don't you pause the video and go ahead and work it out and I'll go ahead and show you here how to do it so I, I'd like to draw a little sketch there's the porous cup and then the gauge will be here so what we're doing is measuring at that point 14 centibars and so we can convert that 14 centibars and one centibar of suction is equal to 10 centimeters I'll say minus 10 centimeters of pressure head so that'll be well, I'm going to put it up here minus 140 centimeters of pressure head so there's minus 140 centimeters of pressure head right here and then we add to that 90 centimeters so the pressure head right there will be the pressure head at the gauge what I called capital G and the previous slide plus the depth so that will equal 140 plus 90 so that equals minus 50 centimeters so if we have a tensiometer set up and we read that on the gauge then that means that the pressure head at the porous cup is equal to minus 50 centimeters of pressure head okay so that's a tensiometer that'll allow us to measure the pressure head and also then determine the total head uh, in the Vedo sun the tensiometers are pretty effective but there are some potential problems you have this porous cup and you have to have good contact between the porous cup and the soil um, ideally you have roughly the same pore size material between the porous cup and the soil itself the tensiometers they're um, fairly fragile the uh, it's a ceramic much like I don't know it's kind of like your uh, like a dinner plate type of ceramic although it's not really that strong uh, it's it will break the these porous cups these uh, ceramics if you drop it on a rock uh, if you, you we're gonna push them into the ground and sometimes we have to apply a bit of persuasion but if you if you hit it hard on a rock you will crack this porous cup so it can be fragile um, when you run one of these tensiometers it goes under suction and so the water is put under vacuum essentially and air that's dissolved in that water may come out of solution and form air bubbles in the tensiometers and that may affect the performance of the tensiometers it also in order to work what's going to happen is you have this you have a gauge here and in order to work the water has to flow in or or out of the uh, formation across this porous cup and it has to equilibrate 
between the pressure inside of the tensiometer and the pressure in the formation. So that may take some time. So for things that happen quickly, um, this may be a problem. Or if the formation permeability is very, very low, then it may be a, a problem. Also, another difficulty is in very dry soils, the suctions may be greater than around one atmosphere. And this porous ceramic, it, it can exclude air from entering uh, up to suctions that are equal to about one atmosphere in pressure. That equals 10 centimeter or 10 meters of pressure head. So greater than that, um, and you'll have problems with the uh, simply water boiling. Um, and for practical purposes, uh, about eight tenths of an atmosphere will uh, will really be about the limit for which these uh, tensiometers will work. Also, if there are temperature differences, you can have the water expanding or contracting. Uh, and so that may cause pressure changes that would give some spurious results. As a result of that, you should shield the tensiometers from the sun, if possible, and um, prevent them from freezing. For our applications, that won't be a problem. But uh, you, we will want to shield them from the sun if, if it's possible to do that.